Uh, I'll stand down here because uh, I want you to be on the stage at some point and uh, uh, I'll try to keep, keep it practical. Uh, my name is Eric. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're all well. Um, I've prepared a series of questions, basically, uh, because uh, I do a lot of different uh, educational things uh, and I can talk about different things, but I want to talk about whatever you guys are interested in hearing. Uh, and my intent today is to provide you with some, uh, some positive arguments <laughs> as to use debriefs as an integral part of, of uh, what you do uh, when you create LARPs. And my first question to you guys is, what's the point of an educational LARP? Yeah. Physical experience compared to intellectual knowledge. Okay. Physical versus intellectual. Okay. Anything else? Yep. Able to learn by own experience. Able to learn by own experience. Yep. Yeah. Um, sort of ties the two together, but making sure that the experience is sensory, um, something that you actually feel, not just thought experiments. Yeah. Complexity. Complexity. Okay. Yeah. Making it oh, learning fun. <laughs> <laughs> the first one. We should have been. making learning fun. More memorable than reading a chapter in a book. More memorable. Yeah. This guy first. Adding emotional content to the uh, knowledge. Hmm. <coughs> okay. You have one? It's more motivational because you do your own actions and you see the result of your own actions. Okay, I'll stop that question for there. I think we have loads of things to go on on, on the first page right there. Now, if we take all these things that you want to have, you want to have complexity, you want to have emotional uh, uh, con um, connectedness to it, you want to make it more memorable, you want to do all these things that are complex, fun, uh, and well, takes a lot of time and planning. But I want to ask you another question regarding planning of, of LARPs and how you guys want to plan LARPs. How do you make sure that you have ethics, that you have an ethical thought about with what you do in LARPs? It's a nice question. Thank you, William. <laughs> Yeah, what, being, say, say being, more, more. being aware that you want uh, good experience, good knowledge for these people and being also so just to, to, to care about psychological uh, support during the game. Mm. I think care is a very good, very good concept to, to bring into a tool art when you find it, yeah. Well, isn't it like, be sure your game is ethical, then you need to define your own ethics. Oh. So you can only be as ethical <laughs> as your own ethics? Well, but ethics is many things, right? Mm. There's not one ethical, if you said moral, then we could go connect to society and look at those values. But ethics is a self It's a self-propelling right? system in a sense, but yeah. Um, then my question would be, what, what, what are your ethics in planning? That depends on what my goals are. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's one of the things I want to talk about, uh, is how you, sort of, uh, you should start with, already in, uh, when you start planning your game, you should start planning your debrief. And it depends on what goals you have with doing whatever you're doing. Uh, you can add a lot of complexity, you can, uh, uh, I think Martin uh, explained or 
presented the prisoner for a day uh, experiment, which is also, I guess, it's a bit resemble, uh, resembles a bit what Pavel was talking about. Uh, you have compre uh, comprehensive systems, and you have um, well systems that are not uh, intrinsically human friendly. Uh, does that mean that you can't learn anything about ethics and how to conduct yourself if you don't create games that go that far? Now, uh, my claim would be that it's possible to do this. Um, and I want to bring out just one example. How, how many people in here are familiar with the Stanford Prison Experiment? Okay, so roughly half and all the lecturers. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, Stanford Prison Experiment was done in, I think, 1973 or something like that, rather, uh, by um, a guy called Philip Simbardo, who's actually quite a brilliant guy. What he basically did was he said, that, okay, I'll divide this half of the room into prisoners and this half of the room into prison guards. Uh, we didn't do it with females, he only did it with males, uh, and they did it in the basement of uh, the Sanford uh, University campus. Uh, and it was an experiment that was supposed to run for a week. If I'm not mistaken, or was it two weeks? Uh, anyway, uh, it was supposed to run for quite some time. Uh, they aborted the mission at, uh, after two or three days. So it was supposed to run for two weeks, but they aborted it after no, one week. Three days? Three days. Why did they abort this? Basically, what was an experiment, but what you can basically also call an educational lock. Violence. Violence? Well, you know about this, so you don't get to answer. This is a <laughs> pondering question. So the people who know about the experiment are not allowed to, to, to answer. The people who haven't heard about the experiment, why did they abort the mission? Yep. Mm, maybe they that they maybe they achieve their goals more quickly. Yeah. Okay. Other thoughts? Perhaps uh, personal deformation of personalities of participants. Deformation. Yeah. Yeah. They prepare for uh, the level of unethical uh, behavior. Uh -huh. Maybe they will prepare. Anyone else? You already said over here. Perhaps they they've gotten more than they expected. They basically got more what they uh, more than they expected, uh, and to a certain extent, they did achieve their goals more quickly. But uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not any more longer considered an experiment that uh, you talk about for the reasons of, of good science. It's an experiment you talk about because it has bad ethics. Basically, they had no control of uh, on the effect it had on uh, both the prisoners and the guards, which is interesting. The guards took their roles to heart and became uh, not directly violent, but mentally violent. They, they put them into a system uh, uh, which wasn't good on either of them. And um, they made sure... Uh, there is this one example where there are some people walking around with sunglasses, and they made sure that they, they put themselves in power. And they didn't have any exercises to sort of ensure what kind of physical, uh, physical things you should do in order to manifest your power. It just happened. They were given the role, you're, you're supposed to be a prison guard, and they took it. They owned it. They enjoyed it. Which is disturbing when you're a peace-loving, hippie, uh, 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 elite student of a university in the U.S. Now... Uh, what were the right, what were the consequences? Or you had a, a, a comment, or did you raise your hand? No, okay. Um, what were the consequences? Obviously, they had a long, long debrief, and they had a follow-up, and uh, they didn't know what would, uh, exactly what happened, and the work with it in itself was interesting. Why do I bring up the Stanford Prison Experiment? Because it has something to tell us about. It has something to tell us about ethics. Yeah. Uh, it has something to tell us about planning, ethics, and how you should try and care for the people that you work with. And I think that's actually a very uh, useful concept in, in, uh, in the sense of a sort of 
have that as a baseline. What do you care the most about? Do you care the most about the storyline, the characters, uh, your goals? Your goal should always be to care mostly about the people you have in front of you and what they're supposed to leave, here, uh, uh, leave the room with or leave the uh, experience with. Um, now, obviously, people are different. And you can never plan to please everyone. But you can plan to have a framework that they can work within. Um, Lars and myself uh, are going to do this, uh, uh, our lectures together. Um, we're going to do, as you see, there are chairs here. We're going to do a couple of experiments uh, here. We'll try to keep them ethical. Uh, and this is to give you guys a hands-on experience of how to debrief. What would you focus on? What would you talk to people? Because I can stand here and talk about uh, uh, my things all day long, and that's really kind of boring for everyone except me. Uh, so I want to do a couple of experiments, and then we're going to debrief them publicly here in the room. And then I want to uh, hand it over to you and let you try to debrief. You've already been doing a bit of it, uh, as far as I understand, every evening. But we're going to do a couple of experiments here. So for the first experiment, trying to be ethical, I'll try to explain you what uh, uh, we're going to do. You see, uh, there are going to be four or two, two pyramids of chairs here with seven, uh, seven people in each pyramid. So I'm going to need 16 volunteers because each team will be eight people. Seven of them will, will be sitting and the last one will be monitoring the other team. We're basically going to have a competition here. Now, uh, before you sign up to be volunteers for this experiment, uh, I want you to be aware uh, that you might not be happy with your own uh, performance after the experiment. Because there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. Okay? So everybody understand that? Raise your hands if you understood this. Good. Perfect. Um, also, you might not be, uh, if you're not the leader of the pyramid, you might not be happy uh, uh, with the information you're getting during the exercise, and you might not be happy with how, you, uh, how the people you work with have performed, just so you're aware. And if you're very unhappy with someone, have a beer with them afterwards and, and, uh, and talk to them on how, why, why didn't it work. Okay. Do you feel that's sufficient information on the goals of what we're going to do? No. Am I going to give you any more information? No. Because we're going to discuss this afterwards. So, uh, I need 16 volunteers. And only, only uh, from the participants. Let me just come up with the first uh, 16 people that come up here. Six more people. It never ended. Okay. Two more. Two more. Seem like you want to? One more? Not lecturers. Okay, I won't say. Oh, you're not. You're not. Oh, you were just a latecomer. Oh, that's good. Okay, so uh, let's do this scientifically here. Uh, the eight of you go over here, and one of you is going to be in monitors. So you just need to decide who's going to be the monitors. All the rest of you sit down on a chair that's facing that way. And the same for for you guys. Yes. 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 Yes.
hands on the chairs. Okay, so Mario, you don't have time? Okay. Well, actually, you don't <laughs> okay, uh, the guys sitting in the room now, you also have a task. You're going to be observers. Okay? So you're going to ask a couple of you, uh, make notes on what you see on how they behave. Okay? This is also, by the way, highly unethical, uh, and you should probably not do what we're doing. Uh, uh, <coughs> what we're going to do now, you feel so secure up here right now. Huh? What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do a communications uh, uh, experiment. Basically, uh, what you see here is a mid-sized or a small to mid-sized uh, company. Um, the CEO is the person sitting right here. So you are the CEO. And you are the CEO. And the people in, at the next level are his lieutenants. And the people sitting on the last level are the grunts. The people who actually do the work. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to distribute uh, a couple of cards to them, and they're going to have a task that they're going to perform. But they're going to perform it in silence. They're not allowed to talk or to signal or do anything. They're only allowed to stare in front of themselves. And they're only allowed to communicate by using the post-it notes. Now, the only person who has access to post-it notes is the CEO. So he has to start a chain of command, and he has to start uh, executing uh, uh, the orders, which are neatly printed on this paper here. I will distribute this paper to you guys after the CEOs have seen it, so you can see what task they're trying to solve. But they're not allowed to communicate in any other way than writing on the post-it notes. Did everybody understand that? No. No, okay. Uh, actually, one point. They're only allowed to write. Uh, I'm going to give them a task, and they're only allowed to write the, the orders on the post-it notes. The reason why I have the monitors, you guys, is that you're, you are going to check the other team, and vice versa. So you're just going to monitor the other team and to make sure that they do it correctly. No cheating. No cheating. Yes, question. Can be send the post-it notes? You can send the post-it notes, but only Chain. Vertically, yes, in the chain, not horizontally. So you cannot send it horizontally. This means that these guys cannot talk to each other. You have to use the chain command. These guys <coughs> here cannot talk to each other. You have to use the chain command. So if you want to send a message, or if you want to communicate with with her, you have to send it like this. <laughs> Which is how it would work in any uh, uh, mid-sized stupid company. This guy has the responsibility for you two, and only you two. Yes. Uh, you for these two. And I'll repeat that since you're sitting with your backs to us. So you have the responsibility for these two, and you for these two. And there is also no communication between the two of you. Okay. So. I will hand out some cards. Now, what do you as observers look for? Nothing. Emotions. Emotions? Okay, anything else? Right communication. How do you communicate? Yeah. Stress level. Trust level. Stress how, do you, level. how do you find trust level when they can't talk to you? I don't know, I said stress level. Stress level, sorry. How do you find the stress level if they can't talk to each other? Well, you can see if they work frantically or calmly, and if they seem secure in what they're doing. What's more? If they work, uh, if they look stressed. <laughs> <laughs> what is to look stressed? Uh, hurried. Uh, they seem confused if they don't seem like they're, they know how it works or can make it work. Okay. They seem confused. How do you how do you deem if someone seems confused or not? Body language. What kind of body language signals confusion? Well, the opposite of what <laughs> signals confidence. You're waffling. You're not answering. <laughs> 
in Korea. Like the head moves, spacer than the. So it looks like dancing? It looks like dancing. Okay, so we're looking for, the observers are looking for movements that look like dancing. Is that what it boils down to? No, but isn't it like, uh, so if I tell them, if I say out loud what I'm going to look for, they're yeah. going to be con like, they're going to be... Uh, conscious of it. Conscious of it and maybe not give it away. So if we, but if we pepper them with what we're looking for, there is no way they can do that. So anyone else? What were you really looking for as observers? BT. Uh, if anyone's cheating. <laughs> okay. If any, why is that important to check if anyone's cheating? I don't trust one of mine, so... Uh... But he's monitoring the other team, though. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to monitor his team, I still do. Okay, you're going to monitor extra good. Okay, anything else? You guys in the back, what will you be looking for? No, no, uh, you in the pink. You, yeah. With the blonde, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what will you be looking for as observers? Uh, what I'm looking for their motion, what their, how they communicate. Okay. And the monitors is really, and you can't look at the, the task. Just uh, you can start uh, hitting the task with the CEO at the same time. Okay, so I'll count down from uh, from three. Um, um, Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, I will look for one more thing. I will look at how they relate to each other, how they feel about it, each other. How will you check that? Um, I think I will look uh, at the body language, uh, the facial expressions, how they uh, exercise their work. I don't know what the work is, but like how they move. Um, Oh, uh, compared to each other. How do you compare to each other? Yeah, no, that's, uh, if you, please feel free to make notes while you're observing, and uh, uh, we'll discuss your observations after. <coughs> there's, there's no hand signaling, right? No hand signaling. You're only allowed, no no cheating, no, no, uh, just do the task as you're, uh, as you've been instructed. Only write uh, messages on the post-it notes. Okay, and um, I think we have a very vigorous monitor uh, in Mona, and I think uh, we're probably not so a uh, vigorous monitor over here, but I think Mona will do the work for four. Um, please go ahead. One, two, three, go. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's your task. And you can't show it. <coughs> will we get have that with the task?
must be swapped, yeah. So he can have more than four cards, in, or in, after the transition is completed, he must have four cards in time. Yeah, take a card and give it back. Yeah. So everybody should have four cards on their hands at all times. before they decide what to give back? Yes. Okay. Questions. Are there four jokers in any deck? Uh, there, there
How is the body language for working so far, observers? I'm just reminding you to look for what you were look for what you were saying you were doing. It's working quite well. Hmm? It's working quite well. Yeah. Just make notes and we'll discuss it after. Yes, the CEO has an unlimited supply of post-it notes. Yes, the CEO is very rich on post-it notes. <laughs> No, the CEO can't distribute uh, blocks of, C, uh, of uh, notes. He has to use the ones he has available. <laughs> and from a gender perspective, isn't it interesting that both CEOs, even here, are male? I'm just telling you.
One more objection to team number one. Anyone need something to take notes on? If so, we have some notebooks. Nobody? Can I have one of the Obviously, the CEO is allowed to speak when you've completed your task. Otherwise, we will have no way of knowing that you're finished.
like searching. Uh, let's see what cards do you have. What do you have? Okay, so you're in fact not done on this end. Okay. And now that's verified here. That's good. 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 And good. And good. And we have a winner. Uh, you guys take the chairs and, uh, and make a half sort of hero of your service uh, in the discussion. <laughs> okay, let's not start the debriefing just yet, guys. Sit down and uh, let's do it uh, together. Like shuffling. Okay. How does it feel to be the winners? Feels good. How does it feel to be the losers? Good. <laughs> As often uh, my, uh, as well, my first point of departure for uh, a debrief is the systemic one, often. And you, know, you want to create a game that has winners and losers. You know what effect it has on people. This is a relatively easy game to play. It's a relatively understandable game. Yeah. If you ask the question, the winners, and we said, wow, 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 and we went and we like, in all their faces, I think they're responsible. Are there people okay. that do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who do that, and uh, basically what I'm saying is just, uh, already in the design of what you're doing, you need to make sure. I mean, if, if there was high stakes here, for instance, if we, if we were playing this for a million dollars, or if we were uh, uh, playing it for the freedom of some of our friends, what kind of emotions are you putting in, uh, uh, are you putting in play by doing that? Um, that's a side note in a, in a sense, but yeah, let's go into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, let's just ask the winners first. What did you do <laughs> to make you win? Cheat. <laughs> They have the most vigorous monitor of them all, so uh, I don't think uh, I don't think they had any opportunity to cheat that thing. Well, I sent uh, smiley faces to my boss. <laughs> Why did you send smiley faces to your boss? Uh, well, it was basically all I could do, and I thought he would uh, cheer her up. <laughs> You are slow. What does that make you think when you get those kind of notes? Motivation. Screw CEO, I have my people here. Screw <laughs> you, I have my people here. Okay, so that's a nice dynamic already there. Yeah. Anything else you did that made you succeed? CEO, how did you operationalize the task? Well, my, my idea was that I should figure out my own hand first. <laughs> um, it, it, it sounds selfish, but it's also a, a dynamic to allow me to put my cards away and be thinking about what's going on behind me. Because I can quite easily get a hand that is good and then try to figure out if the rest of the cards is something we can work with. Can I screw it at the moment when you need to pass cards from one side to another because you have no idea where it actually ended and you might need it back at some point? <laughs> <laughs> like you did. <laughs> yeah, but then you just start passing angry notes. <laughs> 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 oh, so then we all have to probably too much time when it can be Okay. Right, uh, just, uh, yeah, I'm on. What, what, uh, Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, it was not my answer. No, no. <laughs> His first task was giving out notes. 
Don't say send me all your tweets. This, this. Right, it's a very interesting thing because everybody here knows what the task is. And you guys have been playing the game, and still there are some people who don't know what the task is. <laughs> now, what is what was the task? Geo. Well, let's see who didn't know. Yeah. Okay, who didn't know uh, what was the task? Okay, so there are three. Oh, yes. You saw the winner team, okay. Yeah. What was the task? Uh, the task was to get together four of uh, the same type of cards. The same number? The same number of cards. Number of cards. Same number. That was my confusion. Whether number it was or health. Number or suit. When do you decide that that's the task you're aiming for? I didn't. I was just sending the cards and I couldn't guess. You couldn't guess. You saw that you got, what cards did you have? You had subs or you had? No, I had jacks. Jacks. So when you got two jacks, you sort of saw a pattern, and when you got yeah. three, you were sure. Well, I, I was collecting diamonds for a long time. <laughs> 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 and then I, yeah, I mean. So what I did. Now, um, what happens to you, let's concentrate on the four guys at the back of, of uh, your pyramid, or uh, uh, on the back of this pyramid. What happens with the eight of you during the game? Was it a fun game? It was so boring. <laughs> it was so boring. Why was it boring? I love the boy. He had all the notes, and she was giving me almost nothing to do. So I just had to sleep or something else. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have to do things orders without understanding what I'm doing. Yeah. How about the mid level? You guys, uh, who was uh, with you and you on the mid level? How did you? Uh, how, how did this play out for you? So the CEO was giving different comments. <laughs> take this, take this, give me this, give me that, and uh, so I just uh, was trying to coordinate what part, what cards are my best players have, and to think what comment to give to him or what to her, and so it was confusing. Did you have a feeling of mastery? When you did it? No. Okay. It was like shit to me because I didn't understand his handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't understand. I mean, practical things are like these uh, uh, play, uh, play on. Now, um, uh, what I can say is uh, afterwards, uh, during, because we could debrief this on, on uh, a whole lot of topics with you guys only, right? And uh, we haven't even started talking about the monitors. Uh, uh, some of you maybe saw I was talking to, to Magna during the game, and uh, we had a small discussion. Uh, uh, you are aware of the Sanford Prison experiment, and that uh, you're living your role, uh, uh, which you did very, uh, very well. Uh, people take their role seriously sometimes, and way too seriously sometimes. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's very well illustrated by, 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 by what Magna did. Um, However, and we can have a, a longer discussion on, on this exercise if you want to during lunch, I'll be available. But for the sake of these guys, we'll include them as well now. Because if the four of you in the back, or the eight of you in the back thought it was boring, then you should have seen these guys. <laughs> <laughs> what did... Now... I'm going to ask you, because all of you here had a task. You were asked to observe. But my question is, who of you observed me? You, and you, and you. Okay, so three, four, three and four, four -ish. Okay. Now, I'm going to pose a question I don't know the answer to. Or actually, I'm not, I'm not even going to pose a question. I'm, I'm not going to debrief you guys, or let you debrief them. Because uh, when I do things, I think that's a shitty way of doing business. Because if you're allowed to control their reality of their game by saying, you did this and this, and you did this, and then you're both passive, as you all demonstrated, it's boring being the passive part, being the observer. So you're not taking part in, in whatever is going on. Because that's a directive kind of boring. You're still a part of something, and your feelings of being bored are interesting in the whole of the game. While it's interesting to hear the observers talk about uh, what they saw in the sense of, of learning, it also uh, uh, there is a distance there that I find uncomfortable. Because you invite people to co comment on their reality without being part of it. 
Now, why did I ask who observed me? And I'm going to ask you, since you didn't put up your hand and you didn't observe me. Why didn't you observe me? Yeah, I gave you the task, and you complied to the task, which is again, uh, and which is what they are doing as well. Now, as a, as a uh, an educator or a, uh, a game creator or whatever you want to call it, when you're running a project, people tend to do what you ask them to, and again, you should try to care about that. You know, what what are you asking people to do? That's a, being an observer and then taking that away could also be considered unethical. Uh, but it's a very light kind of uh, robbery. I'm not stealing a huge thing out of your life. I stole about 20 minutes of boredom. Uh, uh, okay, you had a question. No, that was a comment on the observing you when, yeah. you, when you bring up the Stanford prison experiment where the teacher himself the man that made the experiment was a part of it yeah. and went native and had to have it was the only reason that the experiment stopped was because he had a friend to visit yeah. and she went what the fuck are you doing yeah. so when you put that context in why wouldn't we observe you when you do an experiment in that context and still there are only four of you who did it <laughs> no, 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 and actually, I sort of want you to, uh, I would have wanted you to observe me, uh, because that's what we're here to talk about, and that's, we've got, we have a, a couple of other experiments, now the only deal, Lawson, or we made several deals, but uh, one of the deals that's important to me is that you guys who were part of this experiment are now no longer uh, allowed to volunteer, so for the other experiments, it's going to be you guys now and then you can uh, reflect on how uh, what does it do with you when you know there's a room full of people just staring at you how do you conduct yourself when you know there's a room full of people staring at you and seeing how you perform and that's why uh, uh, I wanted an audience here because you need to reflect that uh, on things like that when you create games uh, you're free to, uh, as I said, uh, this is not a, a full-fledged debrief, and uh, I'm more than uh, uh, open to, to uh, do a full-fledged uh, debrief with you guys, and, and very much. Uh, I'll be available. But please have a seat.